Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. This here is Elliot, the Bearded Dragon. My name is Lauren Pryor with the Environmental Learning Centers of Connecticut. Down at the Indian Rock Nature Preserve in our Terra Lab where we have our reptiles and amphibians from the Barnes Nature Center temporarily housed. And today I would like us to take a look at Elliot and discuss a little bit about his natural history. So while we get a close look at Elliot here, all over his body, from the tip of his nose, all the way down, his legs, he's got a very long tail here. Well, his whole body is covered with scales. So Elliot, the bearded dragon, is a reptile. He is a lizard. And this lizard uh, is not found in Connecticut. They are not native to Connecticut. Connecticut only has one native lizard. That's the five-lined skink. They hang out in the forest. But this lizard if we wanted to see a wild bearded dragon, we would have to get on a boat or a plane and go all the way to Australia. So they are wild lizards, wild bearded dragons in Australia. And they like to hang out in the drier, hotter, sandy, rocky areas of Australia. So as a, a domestic bearded dragon, they can come in different, we'd call them morphs, different colors, different patterns. So you can have a brown bearded dragon, you can have a orange bearded dragon, a red bearded dragon, they come in different colors. Typically out in the wild, they're going to be camouflaged to match their surroundings. So if they're on rocks and sand and soil, they're going to be darker brown in color. So that gives them that nice camouflage. Right, they're able to blend in with their environment. Bearded dragons get their name because they have these spiky frills on their body. Okay, so they have it going down their body, but they get the name bearded because it's underneath their jaw, looking like a beard. So when a bearded dragon is uh, excited or trying to impress a potential mate or trying to scare off a potential predator, they can puff up these spines to make themselves look a little bit digger, bigger. Their beards, so underneath their jaw, can also change colors. They can make their beards appear darker in color, almost black. Males and females both have the beards. These guys are most active during the day. A lot of activity during the day that they're gonna be doing, here's the really long tail, is gonna be eating since they're hanging out in really hot areas. They're gonna spend a lot of time basking underneath the sun on top of rocks. So since these guys are reptiles, we would consider them cold-blooded. The scientific term for cold-blooded would be ectotherms. Ectothermic. So since this reptile can't regulate their own body temperature, right, so if this reptile gets too cold, they can't uh, 
shiver to warm up. If they get too hot, they can't sweat. This animal relies on their environment to control their body temperature. So basking in the sun is going to be able to warm him up. And then when he's too hot, he'll move, he'll physically move into a shady spot to cool down. Here on the side of Elliot's head, we see a hole. So that's something that distinguishes, even though he's a reptile, distinguishes lizards from snakes. So he has a hole in the side of his head. That is his ear. So on lizards, we can physically see their ears. And since this lizard is going to be digging a lot, they have a special uh, set of scales inside there that will actually act like a bag to catch any loose soil. So they, when they shed their scales, they will eject any sand that gets inside their ear. We've got a nice look at his scales. So bearded dragons will grow to be about two feet in length. And every time this animal grows, since scales do not stretch, these scales have to shed. So Elliot the bearded dragon and all lizards and all reptiles will shed their scales in order to help them grow and to keep their bodies, the outside of their bodies, nice and healthy and clean. So each almost circle that we see is one scale. And he will eat his old scales. So a lot of lizards will eat, or a lot of reptiles, will eat their old scales. Snakes not so much, but a lot of lizards and geckos will. They'll eat their scales for a little extra calcium boost, but then they'll also consume their scales to hide the evidence on where they are out in the wild. Right? So if you leave your shed scales hanging around, your predator is going to find them and know that you're around too. So a lot of lizards will, and geckos will consume their scales for the extra calcium boost and to hide their presence so they're not leaving behind evidence about where they are. This bearded dragon, since he lives in captivity, he doesn't have to worry about predators. We keep him nice and safe. But out in the wild, bearded dragons have to worry about foxes, feral cats, uh, birds of prey, pythons, and dingoes. Remember, this animal is from Australia. But on the flip side, this bearded dragon is going to be preying on insects, so a lot of invertebrates, and uh, leaves as well. So this animal is an omnivore, so they're going to be eating plants and other animals. So in captivity, we give him lots of salad, fresh lettuce. We might top it with blueberries or grapes or carrots, but then we're also going to be feeding him lots of worms and crickets. We can take a look at his feet. So this bearded dragon, this lizard, does have toes, spread toes, and he's got these big claws. So these claws, remember this animal loves the desert, the rocky, dry, hot desert, so those are climbing claws. They're going to ensure that he's able to get a good grip where he's climbing and where he's running. So his spines, not only are they scales, 
but they offer him a form of protection, a form of defense. So these spines, well, typically you would think, oh, well, I'm not touching anything that's pokey or spiky, and I don't want to get, you know, that's not going to feel so nice. These spines are actually pretty soft to the touch. Right? They're very flexible. They're soft. So these spines are a little bit of a trick to this animal's predators. It's more of a, a visual stay away from me. So he always has a way of backing up the way to protect himself. So he's got his camouflage and the spines that are a trick. He is a fast runner, so he can actually just run away if there is danger when wild beard and dragons encounter a predator. They're going to dive into their burrow that they've dug out. They can also use their long tail, kind of akin to a whip. Out in the wild, they're of course gonna have to deal with the challenges of finding water and food and shelter and dealing with predators. So in captivity, they have a longer lifespan, about 15 years or so. In the wild, it could be shorter depending on how well they deal with those challenges of getting food, water, shelter, and dealing with predators. So that is a little bit about Elliot, our bearded dragon, our captive lizard that we have at the Barnes Nature Center. We're going to spend this week talking in our next Facebook Lives. We're going to be talking a little bit and meeting more of the animals that reside at the Barnes Nature Center. So we hope you tune in every day this week at 10 a.m. on the Environmental Learning Centers of Connecticut Facebook page. Well, we'll go right around the room and meet our animals. But for me and Elliot, thanks for tuning in, and we hope you'll catch us tomorrow too.